It looks like it's time for another Gun Runner Roundup. And this one will be a big drive, as we have to get through the rest of the gun skill additions brought to the Mojave by the Gun Runners. For those that haven't watched the first video, and haven't heard of the Gun Runners outside of New Vegas, we'll go over a short history. The Gun Runners emerged from the LA Boneyard 50 years after the Great War, and originally a strange type of bandit raider. They would rob the guns off their targets, then sell them to others. This business grew to become more legitimate as they started importing guns and fixing them up with all the scrap available in the boneyard. They eventually settled in a factory in the boneyard once their business grew large enough and they started to make weapons using the fragments of designs and the still working machines. This depleted the scrap in the boneyard after a few decades and the gun runners were close to being strangled by the regulators. Luckily, one heroic vault dweller killed the death claws that were keeping the gun runners trapped in the boneyard, and they escaped from the aggressive trade stranglehold and became a great trade house in NCR territory, towering over those that sought to push them around before. By the time of the second battle for Hoover Dam, they supplied most of the weapons for the NCR, and are as guarded as they were before. The gang was now a close-knit family, with a secret they were allowed to kill to keep. But for some reason, the gun runners have distributed some of their most unique weapons to the Mojave with a set of sweeping upgrades for a few weapons already available as they open up their vaults to the normal consumer. Mirroring the weapons reviewed already, this roundup will cover GRA rifles. There are two weapons that got new mods, the Mighty Anti-Material Rifle and the Assault Carbine. One base game, Unique, got a generic variant we have already talked about, but we'll touch on it for a little bit. Two new ammo types were added for rifles, one for 50mg and for 5mm. We will then cover the what people want to see, the three unique rifles. The Bozar, the Medicine Stick, and the Incredible Panciencia. But before we get there, we have to talk about the modified weapons. As before, due to the limitations with the DLCs, the GRA weapon mods have to go on GRA weapons, which have a suffix in the pit boy that is GRA in parentheses. First off is the Assault Carbine, which is one of the confusing ones, as unlike the other examples of GRA added mods, the base game Assault Carbine can take mods as well, but only one, so this is more of an expansion. To summarize, the Assault Carbine is a light, 5mm full-auto weapon, a viable secondary and an alternative to the minigun when you want to use 5mm ammo. It benefits from the innate armor-piercing of the 5mm ammo and is more powerful than it seems at first. Now like the base game, the GRA Assault Carbine comes with extended mags, costing 1300 caps and adding 6 to the capacity, exactly the same as the base game. But the next two make it closer to the minigun. First is the forged receiver, which turns the whole receiver into a grayer, more new looking version, possibly a steel. For 1500 caps, this increases the weapon's max durability by 33%, meaning it can shoot 4,983 shots of standard ammo before breaking, and can shoot 1,658 shots of surplus ammo. This does approach minigun numbers, but what if it shoots too slow for your liking? Well, the final mod is for those people. The light bolt is an internal modification that boosts the rate of fire by 20%, from 12 to 14.4 shots per second. But it is the most expensive at 1,950 caps. This has the added bonus of changing the burst fire in vats from 5 to 6, making it more efficient in that form, and in total, this makes the Assault Carbine better for spraying lead, which is what 5mm is for anyway. But it is expensive, at 4,750 caps extra, more than the gun itself. The second modified weapon is the Anti-Material Rifle, and this adds several mods that turn the beast into even more perfection of the sniper's art. It should be noted that for some reason, the GRA version takes 65 AP to shoot in vats, 10 more than the base one. It's, in total, a small price to pay. First will be the carbon fiber parts, which are great for those using this gun regularly as it drops the weight down to 13 from 20. With the heavy weight perk, it will drop down to 6.5, which is very manageable. 
While the high strength requirement usually means you don't need the extra space, it can help tremendously if you like looting or are playing in hardcore. At 2200 caps, it's expensive and niche, but more than convenient. The next one, at 3000 caps, is the Custom Bolt. Like the hunting rifle custom action, it increases the fire rate, but in this case it's 20% more from the already glacial firing pace. Going from 0.45 to 0.54 shots per second is hardly noticeable, and when combined with the next mod, its use is more questionable. The last one, for 2500 caps, is the suppressor, which reduces the noise the rifle makes and specifically doesn't silence it, but lets you line up shots from far away for longer, which makes the custom action semi-irrelevant depending on the scenario. Like before, all mods together are more than the base gun at a total of 7,700 caps. But leaving out the custom action if you don't really need it, it's only 4,700 caps, which is cheaper than a new one. And next, we have the battle rifle we mentioned before, and I will be short as we've already covered this in the This Machine video. The battle rifle is like the 5.56mm pistol, simply a generic version of a unique only gun in the base game. But where that gun has to be bought, this machine is given to the player, meaning it's free and requires only a little bit of legwork to get. Unless you have a patch or a mod that integrates it into the level lists, I wouldn't bother with it, because you are really better off with repair kits. Now, before we get too ahead of ourselves with weapons, we need to touch on ammo. Specifically, the two types of ammo added to fit these guns. The first is a basic upgrade, the 5mm JSP handload. Like other hand loader perk ammo types, the recipe is more involved and needs a higher skill than standard. In this case, it's a repair skill of 50, but in reality it needs a repair skill of 70 to even get the perk. It costs 2 more lead and 1 more powder than the standard 5mm, and the JSP isn't perfect. It does do 30% more damage than standard ammo, and features the same minus 10 damage threshold modifier, but it wears down the gun 50% faster, meaning the assault carbine and the miniguns will burn brighter, but break faster. Now with the CZ-57 Avenger, it's still over 5,000 rounds, so use for GSP in that is for peak performance at a cost, and they have a value of 1, so don't sell them. The other ammo type is one I know people have been wanting to see. This isn't the type isn't made, but has to be bought from most gun merchants in the game, even traveling ones. Costing an absurd 40 caps per round, they shouldn't be used unless you know what you want to shoot with them. These are the 50mg explosive rounds. Doing 80 extra explosion damage in a small radius, it is the easiest way to increase the damage of your shot after sneaking. It is unique for guns, as it can also do damage around walls and obstacles if it splashes correctly. Sadly, unless you have a patch, it doesn't benefit from any explosive damage perk. Which, if you do that adds damage, it could jump to 128 in a 25% larger radius, doubling the damage of your shot. In a suppressed anti-material rifle, you will make the enemy speak of you in whispers for fear that you are listening. Now, we can get to the unique weapons, and to color my opinions, we will be going over them from least favorite to most, at least in this subsection of 3. And so we sadly have to begin with the Bozar, and I have to say it is the biggest disappointment in the whole DLC. The Bozar is a weapon from Fallout 2, a more generic one, where its accuracy and burst fire amount could pair with the sniper perk, with which enough luck could make every shot a critical. It is a cool looking gun, even in Fallout 2, and the GRA rendition is very close to that. But in Fallout 2, the Bozar was the most damaging LMG, and used 223 ammo at that. It was pushing out more punishment per shot on average than the DKS 501 sniper rifle, and with the sniper perk, it could kill the final boss in one 15 shot burst, something only three weapons in the whole game could do. In New Vegas, the Bozar is a husk of this majesty, doing only 19 damage, less than the base game LMG. 
If it did a few more points in the base LMG, my opinion would change, but this weakness really hurts. It does fire faster at an oh, interesting 15.01 shots per second, and it has a magazine capacity of 30. Both things are reference to its old stats in Fallout 2. The DPS is still over the LMG at 285.1, but it flounders on armor by comparison and gets less out of hollow points. Due to the faster fire rate, it only has a crit multiplier of 0.05 times per shot, and with it reloading so frequently, it has a sustained DPS of 126.8 with its 2.2 second reload. So where are the benefits of using this gun? Well, it has the same low VATS cost at 18 for 4 shots in VATS, which is actually less than the LMG despite the faster fire rate. With that in mind, the only advantage is the scope and the spread, which is half of the LMGs at 0.75, which isn't exactly the perfection of the marksman's art, as Fallout 2's description proclaimed. All this disappointment could be yours for a cool 20,000 caps. Unless you change some values in NVE edit or mod, pass by this weapon until you have nothing else to spend caps on. Nostalgia won't make it better. Now, the next gun is not bad, and I'm partial to it, but sadly it isn't anything special. It's the Medicine Stick, a unique brush gun that features decorations of a medicine wheel on the stock with a leather wrap. It is like a more traditional unique. It does 3 points more damage at 78 per shot, and fires faster at 1.38 instead of 1.23 shots per second. The DPS increase to 108 from 92.3 is not noticeable, and the VATS cost going down to 31 from 33 is nice, but is less than a 10% change for all these factors except for DPS, which is just the combined. It has a durability between the modded and unmodded brush gun at 995 shots, which who cares. It weighs half a pound more, which is from the longer tube, which fits 8 rounds, which is the nicest addition. It is an improvement over the base brush gun, that's for sure, but it's not enough to make a real difference in the price point of 20,000 caps and rare expensive 4570 ammo means it's not picked up from the Vendatron very much. If you have the caps, I would spend it. If you want to do a cowboy playthrough, this is the best lever action gun in the game. But for all that, there's not a whole lot to it. The third and last one is a fan favorite, however, and is definitely the best of the three, if not the best gun in GRA. The Paciencia is a unique hunting rifle that can be bought from Cliff Briscoe until he dies, then the robot will sell it. It is scopeless, requiring the use of iron sights, and is in great condition. On the stock, a Mexican flag is wrapped around it, and like the Madison stick, it does three more points of damage, from 52 to 55, with a fire rate of 1.18, which is between the base and modded hunting rifles. Very similar. It has a DPS of 65.7, but its magazine is only three shots, meaning the sustained DPS is 36.7. But all this is not the appeal of the Panciencia. The crit damage is like the 22 Silence Pistol, and that it is double damage, which is a whopping 110. Since it can accept hollow point rounds, unlike the anti-material rifle, the Panciencia loves crit builds, and it has a times two multiplier. With the max crit build, the hollow points actually outperform the jacketed soft point ammo until you fight a target with 37 damage threshold, which is basically nothing in the entire base game. With all relevant damage perks, hollow point ammo, and hitting an unarmored target in the head while being hidden, it can do 2,544 damage. It is the most damaging single shot in the game. And this really isn't even an exaggeration. Besides the fat man, there's nothing that can even come close to this amount of damage. And really, there's nothing in this game that requires more than one shot from this gun in those conditions. At this point, it is almost irrelevant to mention the higher durability of 1,745 normal rounds and 1,162 jacketed soft point rounds. 
and at a price of 12,000 caps, it is the last hunting rifle you will ever need. Now, to conclude, the additions for the rifles are on the very expensive side. Both the Assault Carbine and the Anti-Material Rifle have very usable mods that do fit into the playstyle with those weapons quite well, and I would give them a look if you're interested in those. The ammo types are very basic in terms of one is explosive and one is more damage but more wear. The one side, though very expensive, on the other side it damages your gun a lot, and you have to handcraft every single one of them. In the base game, making these one at a time, or a hundred at a time, is very tedious, especially since you need thousands of them. They are good, but I do think that the modified weapons and the weapon mods are better. Now when it comes to unique weapons, they're not great for the rifles, I'll be straight with you. The Panciencia is really the only one that stands out, with the medicine stick and the Bozar being not great. There's less than a 10% difference with most of them, and the Bozar is just a disappointment all around. So what I would say is that if you have the caps to splash, you could buy Panciencia, or if you're more of an energy weapon dude, you can wait until we have those finished and see what they have on offer there, because there is quite a bit to see. Until next time, this is your Baron signing off, and hopefully you'll come around for the next one.